Gold and Blue Dude here with you again. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I make videos every single day. Sometimes multiple videos depending on how active the day is or what kind of mood I'm in. So if you don't like this video, maybe you'll like one of my other videos. So I've been going conference by conference ranking the strangest looking stadiums in each conference. I've already done the Big Ten and the Pac-12. Today, I'm doing the ACC. And not all the teams in every conference make the list, meaning some of the teams have stadiums that are on just... Either they share NFL stadiums or it's just boring to me. So in the ACC, out of the 15 teams, because I am counting Notre Dame this year, five of them, six of them didn't make the list. The six are Duke, NC State, Syracuse, Miami, Notre Dame, and Pitt. So either they were just too boring or they shared an NFL stadium. So I have nine teams on the ACC's strangest looking stadiums. Here we go. Number nine is going to be Florida State Doak Campbell Stadium. Opened in 1950, has a capacity of 79,560. This stadium is not super strange. That's why it's not higher on the list, but it is pretty cool. It's fully enclosed. The sidelines are thick with suites on both sides. In one end zone, the stands thin a little with more suites on top. The other end zone has been renovated and looks great. It's made up of three decks. When put together, are the same size as the sidelines. It also has two can canopies. That's, that's interesting. Just enough strange to make it interesting and make it on my list. Florida State, number nine. Number eight is going to be Virginia Scott Stadium. Opened in 1931, has a capacity of 61,500. This stadium isn't super strange or awkward or crazy looking, but it is a little unique. It's basically a double deck horseshoe. It completely encloses one end zone. In the other end zone, a heel encloses the lower bowl. The white gates at the top are a nice touch. There's one strange thing about the upper decks on the sidelines. It's they don't come out as far as the lower bowl on both sides. For some reason, this stadium reminds me of a picnic in the park. Virginia Scott Stadium, number eight. Number seven is going to be Boston College Alumni Stadium. Opened in 1957, it has a capacity of 44,500. Boston College has a strange yet boring stadium. Even when it's packed out, it sounds less than 44,500, more like 20,000. They have a different type of home field advantage. They bore you into a loss, well, sometimes. The lower bowl is more like a box that goes all the way around and is a little thin. It has four upper decks. One upper deck on one sideline is actually longer than the one on the other sideline. The upper decks on each end zone look pretty much the same. It's different, it's strange-ish, and boring. Boston College, number seven. Number six is going to be Clemson. Memorial Stadium, a.k.a. one of the, one of the Death Valleys. Opened in 1942, has a capacity of 81,500. I actually live about 20 minutes from this stadium. This stadium provides an, an extremely intimidating atmosphere. The Clemson players gather at the top of one end zone and rub Howard's Rock before running down the hill. It's technically fully enclosed by the lower bowl. The sidelines are super deep. The upper decks are super deep as well. The upper decks spell Clemson on one side and Tigers with the paw print on the other side. One end zone has the hill with Howard's Rock on top of the hill which is open to watch the game on the other end zone has been updated with a lower deck and a small upper deck with suites that enclose that end zone. I've been to several games here and opposing teams better have the game of their lives to have a chance in one of the Death Valleys. Number six, Clemson. Number five is going to be North Carolina Keenan Memorial Stadium. Opened in 1927, it has a capacity of 50,500. This stadium actually used to be over 60,000, 
so they decided to shrink capacity by over 10,000? The bottom bowl is technically a horseshoe because it doesn't connect to one of the end zones. One sideline has a thin upper deck with a small press box and suites. The other, the other sideline also has a thin upper deck but with a bigger press box and more suites. In one end zone, the lower bowl is completely enclosed. The other end zone is also enclosed but not connected. It has three small and uniquely shaped decks. I personally think this stadium is beautiful, but just strange enough to make my list. North Carolina, number five. Number four is Wake Forest. Barely a stadium. BB&T Field, opened in 1968, has a capacity of 31,500. That is not a lot of people. This probably was is the most pathetic FBS football stadium I've ever seen. It's freaking small, depressing, and brings up all-around sadness in me. Not just the size, but the team itself has had a lot of losing with glimmers of hope here and there that get stomped out pretty much immediately. Anyways, each sideline has one single fairly thick deck with a press box and suites on one side and sheer misery on the other side. One end zone has probably the tiniest set of end zone stands I've ever seen. On the other side is a hill in case you're more interested in a picnic over a game because there's plenty of room to have one there. This stadium, this stadium is overwhelmingly disappointing and not much bigger than a Texas high school football stadium. And that's why Wake Forest is number four. Number three is going to be Louisville Cardinal Stadium. It opened in 1998, so it's a newer stadium. It has a capacity of 61,000 even. This stadium checks all the boxes to make my list. It's strange, unique, a little awkward, but also very cool looking. The bottom deck forms a horseshoe, but it is barely connected to the other end zone, so it isn't a true horseshoe. On one sideline, there's an oddly shaped upper deck that curves in at the top. The other, the other sideline has the suites, the press box, and a cool looking canopy. One end zone is fully enclosed by the bottom deck. The other end zone barely connects to the bottom deck. It's a quad deck. Three smaller decks on the bottom and a triangular shaped upper deck. A truly unique stadium. It looks like the architect likes to mix it up with different shapes and uh, odd angles. This stadium definitely belongs on this list. Louisville, number three. Number two is Virginia Tech Lane Stadium. Opened in 1965, has a capacity of 65,632. Strange, cut up, but intimidating are the words that pop up when I think of Lane Stadium. It has one of the most intimidating entrances as they play in Inner Sandman over the loudspeakers as the Hokey players take the walk from the locker room to the entrance to Lane Stadium. But the stadium itself looks a bit cut up. Both sidelines are made up of single, very thick decks. The only difference is one side has a press box and suites while the other sideline doesn't and is a bit thicker. One end zone is yet another single but fairly thick deck that isn't connected to either sideline. The other end zone is a double decker. It has a fairly thick lower deck and a thicker upper deck. These end zone stands are connected to both sidelines but just barely. It's odd, it's strange, and it's awkward, but the Hokie faithful wouldn't have it any other way. Virginia Tech, number two. Number one, Georgia Tech, Bobby Dodd Stadium, opened in 1913, capacity 55,000. This is one of the strangest stadiums I've ever seen. It looks like the jigsaw puzzle gone wrong. It's crammed inside downtown Atlanta, so that, that's kind of cool. It has double decks on both sidelines. The bottom decks are the same size, but one upper deck is thicker 
than the other. One bottom deck is connected to both end zones. The other bottom deck isn't connected to either end zone. One end zone has a small lower deck with sweet with sweets. The other end zone is crazy and just plain weird. I guess it's a double deck that leans to the left, but the right side of the upper deck droops down to the lower deck. Why? Why was the entire stadium built the way it is? One of the rare stadiums I've actually made fun of, but still kind of felt bad for. Wait, wait, wait. It's not alive. It's not alive. It's not alive. And that's why Georgia Tech is number one on my strangest looking stadiums in the ACC. It really just makes no sense. That's all I got for you today. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you on my next show.